talk to you today about young plasma and longevity. I sort of want to give you a little bit of background that'll take you into what we've seen with young plasma in patients. You know, I always say we're done with the rats. We've seen the rats forever. We're ready to see what we can do to help patients. So, thermodynamics, physics, and math govern who we are. Get a cup of coffee, leave it on the table for a while, it cools. Drop the coffee on the floor, it spills, it spreads out. So we live in a world where energy goes from concentration to spread, and we can't avoid that. That is the law of thermodynamics. So aging is not actually a biology problem, but I want you to think of it in terms of a problem of physics. If it wasn't that problem, you'd have to buy a new car, your car wouldn't wear out, your air conditioning wouldn't wear out, nothing would. But what happens, unfortunately, is that life requires a concentration of potential energy that you can actually use that eventually disperses. And the work we do every day to fight this off is our metabolism. But as you make your molecules, there's a byproduct, there's a cost of doing business. And those byproducts then create problems day in, day out. And what that means is that as those products are created and the byproducts are there, your ability now to continue to work efficiently and rebuild back to where you started goes away. And you can't avoid that. I don't care how hard you think, you go to the top of this building and you jump, you're going down. You cannot defy the laws of physics. Now, if we can't keep making the 3D folded structures, then we can't run our system. Well, we can do that when we're younger. Thermodynamics hasn't hit the kid's body quite yet. The number one thing that goes, that hits every part of our body, is the vascular system. And this is what Leonard Hayflick talked about. That's where the Hayflick limit came from and what he studied. And the vascular system hits everything in the body. I see it a lot in OBGYN, because even if you give somebody hormone replacement, they'll still say, well, my hormones are good and my hot flashes are gone, but I'm losing my hair. Because think about the blood vessels all shrinking down. Your body's trying to preserve itself as much as it can. It's trying to lower its cost of doing business. Now, we talk a lot about cells, but let's think of why the cells function well. It's because of what's surrounding them. And I don't think enough people talk about that. And we call that the extracellular matrix. It's sort of a push me, pull you where the cell does its job, but circulating around that is the blood vessels. And in the blood vessels, and I just put three key proteins here. In the blood vessels are these three, are three key proteins. There's hundreds of them. And part of the big problem with the extracellular matrix is we don't know everything that's in there. So therefore, we can't say, oh, well, let me give you this in a supplement or that in a supplement, because it's so complicated. Now, the extracellular matrix, think of it as your blood vessels, think of it as the scaffolding in a building. You know, when they're building a building and they got the complicated scaffolding that they've got that they're painting, or the window washer guys, the scaffolding that he's on, that's supporting your cells. What happens over time is collagen that's in it breaks down, your advanced glycation or your sugar products build up, and your ability, because every time you make a molecule, you lose a little bit of ability to, to make it again, these guys that make the vascular system work can't be produced anymore. And it happens every minute as you're on this planet longer and longer. Interesting, the vascularity is placed around the stem cells because they talk to each other. So you can put all the stem cells in the world that you want, and I'm not saying that they're not gonna do a little bit of a job, but if you put them around a scaffolding that can't talk to them, that doesn't have the proteins that can make the, the whole thing balance, you're not gonna get as far as you possibly can to rebuild the system. This is a big key. And where do we see this? Here's a sample of, of the, the, the central nervous system scaffolding around the cells. But here's two graphs. Look how the proteins change. 
Look how the proteins in somebody who is 30 versus somebody who is 70. So the slide with the heart on it says that the, the cardiovascular disease, more toxic proteins, look how they increase with aging. The Alzheimer's bad proteins also increase. Now again, why did my kids who had those issues from my rotten microbiome and probably the goldfish and the Oreos and all the junk food that I fed them because I was so busy trying to keep myself alive delivering babies, why were they able to then clean everything back up and turn their brain around? But as we get older, we can't. Here's part of your key. This is what's happening in your system. The proteins can't be built up. You make rotten, less efficient proteins. Welcome to physics. And here's the great news. The bad proteins build up in the brain first. Capillary endothelial cells, that's where the bad stuff starts. So now the brain's an issue and the rest of the body follows. And what I added on this slide is look though, when young plasma was put in the system and ran through the brain by the stem cells that you can see how the capillaries changed. The proteins changed, the state of being changed, the blood vessels changed. There was a more youthful proteome circulating, which is going to affect the stem cells a lot better. So you can remove and detox but you can't defy the, the, the forces of physics. If you put somebody on a plasmapheresis machine, and I think it's beneficial, detox is cool, but you can detox and detox and detox and you can stimulate that cell, but you can't make that cell young again to the point where it's gonna be able to make the protein it couldn't make. You wanna know what's a really good example? I'm 59 years old, okay? You can put me on the plasma machine that's out in, the, in Rad City and you can give me albumin and turn it over and turn it over and turn it over. My ovaries are not gonna start making estrogen again. I still gotta take it every morning. So, so if, if that was the case, if we could reverse it over and over and over again, you don't have to do it on the rats. You can just follow common sense. But if you add in young proteins, young factors, young things that you don't even know you need because we don't even know they exist, because we don't know everything that's in our body, what we will find is benefit. Why? Because with aging, and this is from the weiss Curry paper that was published last year. Tony weiss Curry does a lot at Stanford with mice and young plasma. And what they found is that, right, immune cells accumulate in the fat cells. As the blood proteins changed, the stem cells were affected. But read the last thing. Young blood both reverses age-related profiles and initiates novel pathways. Systemic rejuvenation of genes, encoding components of the electron transport chain is especially striking. It upregulates mitochondrial function. Because you give it the support, you put a new chain on the bike, you put a new battery in your car, and it lasts a lot longer. Now, why? Because we hear about all these other things that people want to use. They use stem cells, we're using exosomes, we're, we're trying all these other things. Well, look what young plasma contains. 200 cc's, just 200 cc's to put in, has 374 billion exosomes. So you're basically getting the exosomes, the proteins, peptides. Again, the, the, the restore of the scaffolding and I put all those other studies in there, you can look them up. The joint and cartilage gets better because those guys lose their proteins they need. The brain growth factors, the BDNF, the brain-derived neurotrophic factors, all of those that make you you, you just can't make anymore. So when you put the plasma in, there's no cells, so there's no, gonna be no reaction, and it is the plasma that is, these proteins are made from somebody who is younger. Okay, what about safety? Now I can tell you, this is safety data I wanted you to have, and now I'm gonna show you some case studies of where we saw what it'll do, but I wanted the data there because people go, oh my God, young plasma, I'm gonna put plasma in, or, or it's a problem, it's unsafe. I can't tell you, if somebody's in a car accident, 
they don't, they, have to, they don't know your blood type. They're taking O negative and slamming it in you in the emergency room. If you've not been in the hospital, before you know what hits you. And if anybody has ever seen a postpartum hemorrhage or if anybody has known anybody that bled, trust me, pregnant women know how to bleed. And so they, we put that plasma and I can't remember the last time I saw a problem in the operating room. The anesthesiologist sometimes hangs that stuff so fast, squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. So they do great. It's safe, and you can look at these numbers. One death in 2019, none in 2020 and 2021. So what have we seen when we've used it? You name it. And actually, here's a list, and one of the things that I don't have on there, we have a transplant nurse who is 70 years old, who has wet macular degeneration, who has gotten 91 shots in her eyes, a shot of, uh, every four weeks, got three liters of plasma, has not had a shot in, in uh, two months. The, her ophthalmologist has never seen anything like it. Why? Think about where wet degeneration comes from. The eyes have stem cells, the brain has stem cells, they're there because the blood vessels are gone. The proteins in the blood vessels are a problem. You put the proteins back in the body, the signaling occurs, happens, and all of a sudden, the system works again. Here's a study that we did in the Texas Medical Center where we saw reversal of Parkinson's. So we did 10 people got plasma, 10 people got placebo, two liters of plasma, and you can see that the Parkinson's scale wound up statistically significant. They got better. Why? Because you put the proteins back in the brain. What we then wanted to do is look at aging. Could we add more to truly add longevity, to go longer, to go to 100 or 110 years or 115 years healthy because we can support the system? Maybe more, who knows? So what we wanted to do was we used methylation data. And I know Ryan did a good talk from True Diagnostic on methylation, so I won't go into that so I can get more to the studies. But I, I always like to look at it, think of it like a big strand of Mardi Gras beads. And you want to make, and you wrap it around spools of thread, right? And you want to make sure that everything is connected perfect. This guy's not too close, this guy's not too far, so the cell can do well with its genetics. And here's what we found. 71-year-old male, Type 2 diabetes, hemoglobin A1c, 8.5, miserable. Emotional issues, non-communicative, all kinds of problems. Got two liters of plasma. You can see his A1c came down to eight, from 8.5 to 7 in two months, and his clinical symptoms turned around. Here's the rate of aging that we use. So everything else I'm going to show you is based on the Dunedin pace of aging clock. Suffice it that, right, it's a longevity clock. So it's what your methylation data looks like in a longevity study that, that is uh, computer generated. So your blood, or each of our patients' blood, I should say, and we did a true diagnostic methylation test to look at their pace of aging. And here's what we found. His, this gentleman's pace of aging slowed by 3.5%. And I'm gonna give you just a bunch of different patients. Here's a 78-year-old woman. Her pace of aging slowed by 17%. She felt great. And this lady, I had to put her extrinsic age on there because the change was so dramatic. I've never seen anything like it from 78 to 39 years old. So even though extrinsic age isn't quite as good as the pace of aging, I thought it was pretty cool. But you can see her pace of aging went down. Here's a 53-year-old with two liters, just not even a removal. You can see her pace of aging went down. Here's where we did a little bit of an exchange. So this was some plasma out, old plasma out, and adding the young plasma in. So here's a 56-year-old who clinically said, feeling a little bit less depressed, felt better in his bedroom, lost a little bit of weight. Why? Because again, insulin resistance, inflammation, all that stuff goes away as your body rebuilds again he had a 31% reduction in his pace of aging. Here's a 67-year-old with Parkinson's. 
Got two liters of young plasma. Worst negative we've seen in anybody, we premedicate them with Benadryl, and they, some people get a little bit of a rash or a little bit of a histamine reaction, and it's gone within the day, they do fine. His pace of aging and his symptoms, ton better. Okay, cardiac, and this one's near and dear to my heart because my dad has uh, heart failure. So he's got early heart failure and AFib. So they took plasma, compared to control, and they did an in vitro study, and they found increase in uh, proliferation of cardiac myocytes and a decrease in senescent cells. So I called my dad and I said, dude, we gotta hang this on you and see what happens, right? So he's, he's 79 at, the year, at that time, he's an avid golfer, uh, lives in Myrtle Beach, and I kind of ran down the list. I said, it's something I'm doing. I need you to do this. And, and you know, he goes, die. I just have one question. And I said, you know, I'm thinking, is he going to be worried? What about side effects? He goes, how many strokes will it take off my golf game? So actually, I called my mom today to say, what is dad's handicap? And last year it was an eight, and now it's a six. So it works. So here's my dad. And we, I, was, I was worried because of his little bit of heart failure, so we were, I was a little gentle. We did a liter out and a liter in, and then a week later, a liter out and a liter in. And what we measure in heart failure people is the pro-BNP. And basically, the hospitals, everybody's different. Some people say the number should be 400. Some people say 600. We use the U UCSD number for what they say. They want every, they're happy if everybody's below 899. So he was, you can see, he was 1330 and then went down to 705, no changes. Interesting, came back up again. So I saw a six month change in him, right? We were gentle. Our next patient, we gave a little harder. We took a liter out, put two liters in, and then the next day another liter, and look at that. His pro BNP, his heart failure marker went from almost 7,000 down to 715, and I made him repeat it a few weeks ago, and it's down to 500. It, and he feels great, absolutely. Somebody very near and dear to my heart. So we're now, we're doing, we, we're doing a study, we've got a ton of investigators, but it's, it's, not, it's not like, oh, it's only a study. It's out there, it's for patients, you can use it because it's approved, because plasma's approved everywhere. And what we hope, is that we will all realize that no human is, uh, is limited. Does anybody know who this is? Anybody know Yulid Kipchoge? Anybody a runner? Right? They said it could never be done. He ran a sub two hour marathon, but, but he didn't wake up one day and put on his Nikes and just run out the door. He had a special track, right? He had alpha fly shoes. He had people block in the wind. So that's us, right? I'm good, I'm 59, I'm staying healthy, I'm doing all the good things I'm supposed to, but on top of that, I'm just gonna get a little help from my young friends. So it's safe, it's age, young, between 18 and 24, it, you, it's blood type matched, and it is sex matched. And you will do great, so let's all get young.